Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'd. Ayyul ahbab. From some of the important traits of a believer. is that they are not wasteful with their wealth, their time, and their health. And as the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to us, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, emphasizing the importance of using our time and our health in righteousness. Because those two things, ayyul ahbab, are some of the most precious gifts that we can have in this dunya. That so many people, especially when they're on the end, at the, the last final stages of their life, they wish for more time. And or they wish for health. If you've ever visited someone who's on their deathbed, ayyul ahbab, and you see that they are dying from a particular illness and sickness, especially if they're a young age, at a young age, dying from cancer, dying from uh, all the various illnesses out there, many of them would covet more than anything. They don't care about the wealth, but they would love to have a second chance at life. More time to do good deeds, more time to spend with their family, more time to do some of the things that they always wanted to do, but instead their life was cut short and they were unable to do so. So health and how we spend our time are imperative, ayyul ahbab. An ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal, radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma qal, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم نعمتان مغبون فيهما كثير من الناس الصحة والفراغ متفق عليه رواه بخاري in this hadith that was narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari رحمة الله عليه على إمام بخاري the Prophet والسلام, said, as was narrated by Ibn, uh, uh, Ibn Abbas, ta'ala he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, two blessings that the people are careless about or overlook, most of the people, and he said, it is health and time. Ayul Ahbab, spend your time doing those things which will benefit you. Doing righteous deeds. Doing your fara'id, doing the obligatory duties like prayer fasting the month of Ramadan, making the pilgrimage if you're able to do so during the time of pilgrimage, doing the extra duties, praying extra salat, paying the zakat if you have the wealth to do so, giving charity, smiling, even if that's all you have is a smile, then smile and greet people with kindness, being obedient to one's parents, sharing benefit with others, using your time to seek Islamic knowledge, to lift the ignorance from yourself as well as others. This is how we can benefit from our time. And benefit from your health by doing those same things, because the health and the time, they go together using your time to do righteousness and using your health while you're able to do to do those to do your obligatory duties and the extra duties because when your health 
is in decline, you will find that it's more difficult to get up for Fajr, to get up out of the bed even, to go to the masjid if you're able to do so now. But maybe there will come a time in old age you will not be able to, that you'll need someone else to take you. Or your sickness may prevent you from fasting. And may Allah protect us from that. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. But these are just some of the examples and why we need to use our time and our health in righteousness to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us with health and grant us with additional time to obey Him and forgive us of our sins and bless us all to die in a state of Iman. وَلَا تُمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And do not die except in a state of belief. وَصَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَمْ عَلَى نَبِيَّنَ مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَى عَلِيِّ وَصَحْبِهِ وَسَلَمْ